Now let's take a look at the set of basic gates that are used in most logic circuits. The term gate itself is a term that is used to represent the most basic function possible within the binary system. So these are things uh, <coughs> such as take a zero and convert it to a one. That's a very basic operation. <coughs> and so that would have a, that could be implemented as a basic gate. Gates are logic circuits, meaning that we, when we draw them out to begin with, we don't look at the actual electrical quantities or the power supplies. We just look at zeros and ones coming in and what the zeros and ones coming out are. So let's take a look at this set of eight basic gates. And for each one, what we'll do is we'll draw out the uh, four ways to describe its functionality, the symbol, true table, logic function, and waveform. So the first one that we start with is simply the buffer. And the buffer uh, has a symbol, which looks like this, just a simple triangle. And it's got the input on the left, output on the right. And what we can say is that if we describe the functionality of this using a truth table, we would have the input and we would have the output. And we list all possible values for the input. In this situation, it's one input variable. So we, it can only take on 0 and 1. We could have solved that by saying 2 to the n or 2 to the 1 is equal to two, and simply what, what a buffer does is just simply passes the input to the output. So if the input's a zero, the output's a zero, if the input's a one, the output is a one. <coughs> yeah. So that's the description of a buffer. Now, the reason it's a basic gate is because knowing the truth table for this, if you ever see this triangle, that means that you have a buffer. So now we know a shape that is associated with a particular functionality, so we actually don't need to talk about the truth table very much because we know what a buffer does. All right, if you talk about the logic expression, it's simply going to be out is equal to in. We put the output on the left, and then we put the inputs on the right, input arguments. And then if we looked at the logic waveform of this versus time, we'd simply have an input that came along, was a 0, went to a 1, and the output would simply be a 0 and a 1. So the most basic thing that you can do with a digital system is just, or a digital signal is just pass it from the input to the output, and that is called a buffer. Okay. The next most basic thing you can do <coughs> is invert a signal. So let's take a look at the next basic gate, which is an inverter. Now an inverter will have one input and one output, and it has a symbol where it's a triangle with an inversion bubble on it. So that whenever you see a bubble or a circle on a signal, that's an inversion bubble. And what that means is that you're going to do what we call an inversion or a complement spelled with an E, and that means you're going to take a 0, flip it to a 1, take a 1, flip it to a 0. So the true table of this would simply be one input, one output, and I would have possible codes would be 0 and 1, and then the outputs would simply be, if I had a 0, I would invert it to a 1, and if I have a 1, I'd invert it to a 0. So that's a true table for an inverter. If you look at the symbol of it, I see it, this symbol will triangle with an inversion bubble on the output, and I know immediately what this basic gate does. If I looked at the logic expression for this, there's a couple ways that we can describe it. First of all, we could say out is equal to in complemented. Now, one way you can do a complement is by putting an inversion bar over the input variable, and that works good when you're drawing it out on paper. If you have a text, if you're doing this on a computer, sometimes you don't have the ability to draw a bar over there. So what we can do is you can also do in and put what we call uh, an inversion tick right there. This is also called a not gate, and a not is an operation that is an inversion. So not, complement, and inversion all mean the same thing. So inversion, complement, not. So some people sometimes call an inverter a not gate, <coughs> and that just means that you invert or complement the input <coughs> to get the output. You can also say, you could say this verbally, out is equal to in not. And that means this inversion tick right there would be a not operation, and this bar over the top would be a not operation. The waveform, uh, the waveforms are not quite as meaningful once you start looking at these basic gates, but you have an in, which takes on a zero and a one, and then the out takes on a one and a zero. So that's what the logic waveform would look like for the inverter. So we have our first two basic gates now. Let's take a look at another basic gate, which is going to be the AND gate. OK, so let's take a look at, at what an AND gate is. So I come along, and 
and we are going to have an AND gate. And the symbol for that is going to be two inputs. We'll start with the two input AND gate. And it's going to be a symbol that looks like that. So on the left, it's a straight line. And on the right, it's a curved line. So we'll, t we'll call the input variables A and B. And we'll call the output F. And what an AND gate is, is you can think about it where the output is only a 1 if both A and B are a 1. So if I draw that out in true table form, I have A, B, and F. And then I have all possible input codes, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then my output F is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. So the only time the output is what we call true is when both inputs are true. Said another way, true meaning that the inputs are a 1. So that's the AND gate. And if we extend that, or if we look at the logic expression, the operation that we use, so we would say F is equal to A, and the AND operation is the center dot. Okay, so it's a center dot right here means AND operation. So this would read as F is equal to A ANDed with B. <coughs> if I extended an AND gate to a three input AND gate, which you can, you can have, in theory, you can have an indefinite number of inputs. In practice, you can't, but let's just say we had a three input AND gate. All that does is you would list out the inputs, say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and you'd have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And the logic still holds where the output is only true if all of the inputs are true. So it's only a 1 when A is equal to 1, and B is equal to 1, and C is equal to 1. So the true table for a 3 input AND gate would look like this, and so on and so forth as you went to a 4 input, et cetera, et cetera. So that's an AND gate. And what we can do is we can actually create another basic gate using the AND gate by putting an inversion after it. And that's going to be called the NAND gate. So it's a NOT AND. And what we do here is you simply invert the output. So in this situation, I'd have A and B. And I'd have it ANDed and then inverted. And that's the NAND gate. So the true table for this is A, B, and F. And I would have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. The output is exactly what the AND gate would be, but inverted. So I had 0, 0, 0. So I'd have 1, 1, 1. And I have 1, so I'd have 0. So it's just exactly the exactly an AND gate, but with the output inverted. Okay. Now, when I draw the logic expression for that, I have to be a little bit careful. So I say F is equal to A ANDed with B knotted. Okay. And we could also say, if I put A ANDed with B, I could put them in parentheses and put the not operation after that. But the order of precedence is that an AND is that underneath goes first. So A ANDed with N, the inversion takes place on the other one. That's not the same as saying A not and with B not. That would, this would be equal to A going through an inverter, B going through an inverter, and then going into an AND gate. And that is not an AND gate. Okay? So you kind of got to keep that in mind. So that's an AND gate and that's a NAND gate. The next one that we look at is called an OR gate. And so what an OR gate is, it's logical disjunction. So it's not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily addition. Well, actually, before we do that, uh, if you think about this, <coughs> an AND gate, this is actually logical multiplication. Multiplication. And it works out as you would expect, because anything multiplied by 0 is 0, and 1 times 1 is a 1. So it actually does kind of work out. So sometimes you'll call this uh, a product. So you'll do, OK, I want to logically multiply two variables together. You'd simply do it with an AND gate. If you come to the next set of gates, which is going to be what we call the OR gate, you can think about this as saying the output will be true if either input A is true or input B is true. So the symbol that we use is A, B, and I go ahead and I do a symbol like this. So notice that on the left-hand side, I had a curved line, and then on the right-hand side, I also had a curved line. And that is an OR gate symbol. And the way that truth table looks is I have A, B, and F. And I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And the output's going to be simply 0, 1, 1, 1. So notice that the output was true if either A or B was true. So anytime you had a 1 on the inputs, the output was true. 
the way that you draw the logic expression for that is to say f is equal to a, and you use a logical or operation. This is also called the logical sum operator, and it's simply read as f is equal to a or with b. So that's the or operator, also called the logical sum. And if you extended that to a three input version, so let's say that I had a three input gate, A, B, and C, I would simply have a symbol that looked like that. And then I would list out my truth table, A, B, C, and F. And I would have eight possible inputs. So I would have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And I would have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And the outputs would simply be zero, and then any time you had an, any input insert, asserted, you would have the output would be asserted. So you would simply have something that looked like that. So that's an OR gate. And then as you would imagine, you're also going to have a NOR gate, which is simply an OR gate with the output inverted. So I'd have A and B, and I put an OR gate, and then I have an inversion bubble on it, and that is my output. The truth table for this is simply the exact same as an OR gate, except that you invert the output. So in this situation, instead of being 0, 1, 1, 1, as in an OR gate, I'd have 1, 0, 0, 0 in a NOR gate. So in this situation, what I would have for my logic expression is simply A ORed with B NOT, or I could write it as A ORed with B NOT if I put the A ORed with B inside of a parentheses. So that is now the NOR gate. So what we've covered is a buffer and inverter, an AND gate and a NAND gate, an OR gate and a NOR gate. So let's stop there.